Okay, welcome back. So in this video, I'm just going to go through the formulas for the Riemann sums. We have a left Riemann sum, a right Riemann sum, and a midpoint Riemann sum. So I just want to explain where those formulas come from and sort of what they represent. They are very like mathematical looking formulas, but I think understanding them conceptually is more important. So I'm going to go over both parts so you can see all of it. So given a function f of x and an interval a to b, we can find the approximate area that is bounded by the curve and the horizontal axis using rectangles. So the rectangles will have equal width, delta x, and a height of f of x sub i, where x sub i is the endpoint of the rectangle we're using, and f of x sub i is the height of the curve at that point. So we're basically taking an input on the x-axis and finding the corresponding output, which is the height of the rectangle we're going to use. So if I draw a little picture just to consider, so we might have a function f and we're looking at an interval from a to b, and I'm going to be choosing some values in the middle, some x sub i values to use as my endpoints, and I'm going to find the function value at those points for the height of the rectangle, and then delta x is the width. And the formula we're going to use changes depending on whether we are doing a left, right, or midpoint Riemann sum, but this is the general idea and the sort of terminology and notation we're going to use. All right, so even though each of the types of Riemann sums will have its own formula, they do have some common features and they're going to look pretty similar. So first off, we always have n rectangles. So n is the number of rectangles we have, and it means we're splitting up the interval a to b into n pieces. So we can find the width of each rectangle by taking b minus a, that will give us the length of the whole interval, and then dividing it by n. So we're taking the length of the interval, dividing it into n pieces, and that gives us our width, which is delta x. Then the x sub i values are our x values we're using on that interval from a to b, and x sub i is an indexed x value, where we're doing i from one up to a number. And actually we sometimes have i is zero, but just remember that x sub i is indexed, so there's a lot of them we're using. We're just using x sub i to represent that we're summing them up over a bunch of i values. Then our whole goal is to find the areas of these rectangles and add up those areas. So when we think about the area of each rectangle, it has a height and a width, and we're going to add them up with a sum. So we're going to have something that looks like a sum from i equals something up to something of f of x sub i, that's our height, times delta x, that's our width. So really this is just a height times a width, and we're summing them all up. We use this with some notation, especially if we have a really large number of rectangles that we're using, but oftentimes we just have a handful of rectangles, and so the sum notation might not be super important when we do that, but I will always use it just so you can see the sum notation in relation to all the rectangles we're adding up. So for the rest of the video, I just want to go through what the left, right, and midpoint sums look like and how they sort of work with the different values that we use and then show you the formulas. So let's draw just a general looking picture here. I'm going to draw a function f that has this curve and I'm going to look at some interval from a to b. a and b don't necessarily have to be positive, but I'm just drawing them as positive here to make things simpler. So what we do is we take that interval from a to b and we want to identify a bunch of endpoints of our rectangles so i like to think of that we're just subdividing this interval into some x values so x sub 0 is a and x sub n will be b and then we just fill in the rest counting up from 0 up to whatever n is then the difference between each of the x values or the distance between them is delta x that's going to be the width of each of our rectangles. That rectangle is going to sit in that little space. Then the height of the rectangle is determined by which Riemann sum we are using. So let's start with the left Riemann sum. This means on each of these little intervals, the little sub intervals with delta x width, we're going to use the left side of those intervals for the height. So here I'm taking the left side of each of those intervals and looking at the function value at that point and making that the height of the rectangle. So for x sub 0, I look at the function value, f of x sub 0, and that's where the height of the rectangle is that we use. Then I repeat this for the rest of the rectangles, always using the leftmost point to be the height. Writing this out, if I'm trying to find the areas of all of these rectangles, I'm going to start with the first rectangle, 
Now I'm going to take the function value, f of x sub 0, that's my height, and multiply it by the width, delta x, and I repeat this for all of the rectangles. So f of x sub 1 is the height of the next rectangle, times delta x, the width, and I do this until I get to the end, and then I have f of x sub n minus 1 times delta x. That's the last rectangle I have here. We can put this together as a sum. So we're starting at i equals 0, since we're using x sub 0, and we're going up until n minus 1, since n minus 1 was the last point we used. And the things we are summing are f of x sub i times delta x. So since we are using left endpoints, we're starting at 0 and going up to n minus 1. Okay, so let's try it now with right Riemann sums. So here we have n rectangles. I'm going to keep my same points that I have. But instead of using the left side of the rectangle, we're going to use the right side of the rectangle as the height. So now x sub 1 becomes the end point of this first rectangle, and then f of x sub 1 is that height. And we repeat this for all of the rectangles. So writing out my formula, I now have f of x sub 1 times delta x, plus f of x sub 2 times delta x, all the way into the last one, which is f of x sub n times delta x. So here, what makes this different from the left Riemann sum is that I'm starting at i equals 1 and going up to i equals n, because I'm using the right side of each of these rectangles. And again, I'm summing the same thing. I'm summing f of x sub i times delta x. Okay, so for the last type of Riemann sum, I am using midpoints. So in each of these intervals, instead of using the left point or the right point, I'm going to use the midpoint. So the rectangles now have a height that is that midpoint value. And to represent those midpoints, I'm going to use a bar notation. It just represents the average. Usually bar is used to represent an average. So I have x sub i bar, and that's equal to the sum of the two points next to it divided by two. So x sub i minus 1 is the 1 to the left, and x sub i is to the right. We're adding those together and dividing by 2 to find the midpoint between them. Then I repeat this process just with my x sub i bar points, and I'm starting at i equals 1 and going up to n, just with the way that we choose to label them. So for the midpoint Riemann sum, I'm getting i equals 1 up to n of f of x sub i times delta x. Okay, so those are the formulas for the midpoint, right, and left Riemann sums. Oftentimes textbooks just show you the formulas and don't necessarily walk through all of the steps, so I'm hoping that this is a good reference for you to return to if you're wondering why the formulas look like they do, or just to remember what the left and the right and the midpoint refer to. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.